you guys need to check these out i was in field and stream a couple of days ago buying some a rigs because i'm trying to catch a really big bass you saw that in the last video but i also saw these things and i think you guys need to see this i've never seen these in stores matt robertson uses these on the elite series tours i mean if they're good enough for him i think they're good enough for me so i want to try one i've actually never used one so i'm going into field and stream and i'm going to go pick one up i'm not going to tell you guys what it is i think i might have showed it in the last video but still a little mystery these store trips always get expensive. Last time I came in, I could have spent like $5. Well, $55 or $62 later, actually. Let's see if they have them. These trips wouldn't be as bad if I didn't zigzag through all the fishing aisles before I like go to what I need to get. This is what always gets me. I'm like, ooh, I need that. Ooh, I need to try these. Let's see what they got. Let's see, let's see. Power stingers in the red. I don't have these. ugly stick carbon rods but i want this one. Oh, are they just left-handed oh here's a right-handed i was about to say i was going to be kind of upset that they were only left-handed yeah so they have spinning and that's like a 2500 size yeah i'd say that's about a 2500 series real then they have the good old-fashioned black max baby Let's see how much it is I'm pretty sure that these rods retail are 99, I want to say, and then the reel is 40, I want to say. So let's see how much the 129. Okay, can't really put it in like the budget combo realm, but yeah, so it's 129. Black Max $40 rods 99, so that's right on point of what it should cost. The rods are 139. Whoa. I thought they were 99. Oh, since they're 139, that's like a steal. You basically get the Black Max for free. So like the rods are 139 and the Black Max is, so it should be 170 and it's 120. Okay, that's a snag right there. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay, so the spinning version of this rod is 109. So that's $20 less than what this one is. I'm gonna get this one today, but if you wanna see me come back and get the spinning rod, because I know a lot of you guys still do use spinning rods for bass fishing, nothing wrong with that. I like a good spinning rod too, so if you want to see me come back and get the spinning rod, 350 likes on today's video, I'll come back and get the spinning rod. Alright, now we just have to see what all sizes they have in the store, because I'm sure these rods come in every size that you could possibly want, but the ones in the store might not, so let's see. It's a good thing too they have left-handed, because a lot of combos don't come in left-handed, so yeah, I need to learn how to use a left-handed combo, because it would be a lot cheaper. Left-handed stuff goes on sale a lot more than... No, I'm not kidding. Medium heavy, medium heavy. Yeah, they're all medium heavy. All right, yeah, so they're all seven foot medium heavy. So we're just gonna go with this one right here. That's a left hand. I don't want that one. We'll go with this one. All right, let's go check out. The next morning. Did I put my truck in park? I got out at Bass Pro a couple of days ago and I did not have my truck in park and it kind of like started rolling a little bit. It happens a lot more than it should on the channel. But yeah, we have the kayak all loaded up this morning. Since in the last video, I showed y'all the battery on the twin troller. I'm not sure how much I don't think we're gonna be able to use that battery anymore. So we're gonna to have to replace that. Then also we need to replace two of the cables on the twin trollers. But we have the kayak loaded up this morning. We have two very nice fishing kayaks. So there's no really big deal about the twin troller. We need a good leg workout this morning anyway. So checking out the kayak and then we have our ugly stick combo and we're gonna to try to catch some big mouth bass this morning on our new combo. So stay tuned. We're gonna get our stuff unloaded and get on the water and start catching some big old beautiful big mouth bass. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna get this thing unhooked and then we are gonna get in the water and start catching some big mouth bass on that new combo. I'm excited to see how it's gonna do. I'm excited to see the rod and feel the rod because when I think ugly stick, I think just straight catfish and big, ugly, nasty fish. You know, if I need to go catch a river monster and I don't know what I'm gonna catch, but I know it's gonna be over 20, anywhere from like 20 to 100 pounds, I want an ugly stick. So hopefully we can catch one of those monsters today. So I think we're definitely gonna go crankbait this morning. This one does 11 to 13 feet. Uh, chartreuse always seems to do pretty good in here. And then we have a whole bunch of these new money badgers. And these things have been working really good. It's fall time, perfect time for the crankbait. We're gonna get another crankbait box and see what we have in that one because I want one that doesn't necessarily go as deep as 10 to 13 feet. I think that might be a little bit too deep for in here. I'm not gonna say we can't catch them on the 10 to 13, but let's see what we have in this one. Might have something that'll work a little bit better for us, like this one right here. I don't think I took those cranks off of the rods that I used for the tournament, but 
think this one should be a good one to start with and then kind of switch over to something kind of like that right there we're definitely gonna start with this little shad color right here because shad is definitely one of the main foragers in this pond all right let's see what we can do one of the videos that I have coming out for Vlogmas is going to be a comparison between an Old Town and a Bonafide kayak. I'm pretty neutral. I fish out of both. I haven't had this one for as long, but I feel like it's pretty much made its impression on me already. Um, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of differences between the two. Stability, I'd say, is probably about the same. I'm 6'2". I fluctuate between... When I say this, you're not going to believe me. I fluctuate between about 190 and 220. So, you know, depending on how the fishing week's going, you know, if it's a good fishing week, I looked a little bit cracked out sometimes. first cash just had to send it out there all right you might be looking at this reel and say hey Larry that's not the same reel that came on it originally you'd be right it's not the only reason for me switching it is because this reel has a little bit thicker handles it's the exact same setup just thicker handles on this reel the OG Black Max I love it to death but those handles are just like I can use it the handles on the OG Black Max I can use but since I had the big ones I just switched over to the big ones there's nothing wrong with the small ones I'm just kind of used to throwing like a bigger handle just kind of personal preference yeah, so this is the seven foot medium fast right here and I love this little grip too I love the carbon look it's not necessarily carbon it's almost like a it's like a woven thread almost and then this is has like a little carbon look up here so the rod looks really good I love the black and red look and then the black max looks perfect on it too Yeah, and this crankbait feels good. You can feel vibration of it and everything. I think it's definitely, it feels like a hundred dollar rod. We'll see how it lasts up through a good day of fishing. Normally you can tell about like value of rods and combos after one session on the water. You can tell like, man, I feel like I got ripped off or this thing should be worth two, three hundred dollars or it's right on price point with what I expected out of it. And if you're on the borderline with this combo, I feel like I should throw in there. Matt Robertson fishes the Elite Series with this exact rod. I'm not going to tell you he uses Black Maxis, but he fishes the Elite Series. Let that sink in the Elite Series. Like professional, what is this going on right here? Let's kind of get it over there and see if maybe we can catch that. Top tier Elite Series angler, not just a guy that made it from the Opens this year. Like high level Elite Series angler fishes a ugly stick rod on the elite series and i mean they're bass rods it's just funny to me that like ugly stick makes a good bass rod not saying that they're not capable to do so but when i think ugly stick like i said earlier i just think of 100 pound catfish on an ugly stick gx2 and i mean this thing feels perfect but we'll have to hook up before we can give you all the true thoughts of it have to see what we can do i mean castability feels there There we go. There's our first one right there. Oh, that's a big one. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. So we left our scale in the thing at the car. Yeah, I love this rod. It's, I love that it's a medium. You can feel the give in it, so you're not going to lose any big fish on a crankbait. I think that's what this rod is going to be for. Like, final review is... Um, I think the one in the store that I looked at on the video is a six. I think it was a seven foot medium heavy. This one's a seven foot medium. So I just probably picked up a different one. The seven foot medium, I love it for like these crankbaits because it's good and soft. And when this fish kind of thrashes around, I can kind of, I feel like it's not going anywhere. You know, the rod kind of goes with it. And then you pair it up with some good fluoro. Something has a little bit of stretch to it. Um, it's perfect, perfect. And look at that, look at that net job right there. Boom, that's the first one. Oh, that's a nice little two pounder maybe to start the day off. Look at that. Boom, first fish of the day and look how he ate it. A 
Okay, so first impression of this rod, I definitely think that this is gonna be like my new cranking rod. That next tournament I fish on the 19th, I'm definitely, this rod is probably gonna be the first one that I pick up with the crankbait on it. The seven foot medium, but that crankbait is just so sweet. And then it's good and soft too. You're not gonna rip the hooks out of a fish in the mouth. That actually performed like surprisingly well. I thought, honestly, I thought when I hooked a fish, it was gonna kind of feel, you know, like if I hook one on a spinning rod, it was gonna feel a little weird. This thing feels really good. You had to just catch one on a medium rod just to kind of feel what I'm talking about. But it's good and soft and you never really, feel, I never felt like I was gonna lose the fish. If you pair this with a good reel with a good drag system, I feel like you pretty much would never lose any fish. And then as well, was some good line but look at that's our first fish of the day a nice little two pound lmb let's go thank you for playing dude see ya there it goes back down all right let's see what else we can get that one ate it right at the tip of the boat like he probably followed it for a while and then just decided to eat it as it was starting to come up out of the water column i love that twin trailer to death but it's something about fishing a moving bay off of a kayak just that slow, constant move. It kind of slows you down, kind of forces you to fish a little bit slower. I don't know, I think about it more when I'm on the kayak. Like I need to slow down my retrieve a little bit. The water's gonna be cold. Fish might not be as, oh, there was a little hit right there. Fish might not be as excited to eat. All right, since we already did catch one on the jerk bait or on the crank bait, we're gonna try to catch one on a jerk bait. There are two different color stunners here. We have kind of like the clear one the water's a little dirty, so I think white's gonna be the move for right now. We're gonna try to catch one on this. That's the benefit of having this soft rod. We can get away with throwing a jerk bait on it, as opposed to like a seven foot medium heavy. Yeah, you can throw it on it, but that wouldn't be like my preferred rod. I like a 6.6 six to 6.10. Then we're gonna fish this in a little bit more open water, a little bit deeper too. Since it's getting cold and we've had a lot of consistent chillier days, Got a lot of days like kind of in the 50s and in the 60s so hopefully the water temperature is going to be dropping a little bit the fish will be moving out a little bit deeper and also they'll be eating stuff like jerk baits all right i kind of don't like this lure selection anymore i'm gonna tie on a lipless i haven't i don't think i've caught a fish on a lipless this year and that used to be one of like my absolute go-to lures. The jerkbait felt really good on this rod. I mean, it's a six or it's a seven foot medium rod. So it's gonna probably, a jerkbait's gonna feel good on it. Crankbait's felt good on it. Uh, medium, I kind of like a medium heavy for a lipless. Like that's just preferred personal preference, but I can definitely make it work on a medium rod. This is a test I do on all of my rods. Uh, sometimes it doesn't make the video because i don't ever think to put it in there and it, i don't really think it really accounts to anything towards the performance of the rods it's just kind of like a personal preference thing i hate flimsy guides on rods so this is what i call the flimsy guide test all i do is put my thumb up against the guide push it forward push it backwards and see if it moves you'd be surprised some of like the high dollar rods that like i mean 250 dollars 300 dollars rods that like I could pull the guides out of the rod and i'm not sure if there's reasoning for that i can't think of any good reason to have loose guides on your rod you know, I fish every day, guys, so like these rods go in and out of the truck, in and out of the house. They get dropped on the ground, and the last thing I want to do is break a guide or knock out one of the rings and have for a line and, you know, start breaking off fish or breaking line because my guides on my rod are weak. But that's the number one. That's normally the first thing I do in a store is just kind of like feel the guides because whenever you find a rod, go into a store and like move guides on all different brands of rods you know some rod some brands have really good rods some brands have a mix some are really good some are bad and then some brands have just horrible rods and they're all two three four hundred dollar rods so i just like that i've never found like a correlation to like a loose guide rod the guides either like falling out of the rod or the little inserts in the middle of the guides falling out i've never had anything like that happen with a, a rod with loose guides the only thing that happens is they'll just kind of get off track and kind of spin around on the rod and one might be bent back one might be bent forward just kind of like personal preference a little pet peeve of mine i hate i hate a loose guided rod and even too like on some of those loose guided rods if you hook up with a big fish i mean even the hook set can bend a guide and you don't want any i don't want any movement in my rod except for like the little bend it's supposed the parabolic bend it's supposed to have like the only thing that should move on my rod is just the blank of the rod all this stuff should move it should move with the blank 
fishing has been very tough. You can definitely tell the seasons are starting to change. I kind of think I missed the fall bite out here. I think the fall bite was like end of September, end of mid September was like our really good fall bite right when the temperature kind of changed because it's like the top water bite hasn't really picked up yet. The cranking bite, we've had a pretty big drought for this time of the year too. I mean, we didn't have rain for maybe two months or so. So I'm sure that probably had a lot to do with it. A lot of the ponds were super dry, super bare bones. But the positive out of that is you find a lot of brush piles you didn't know were there, either from hitting them with your kayak, getting snagged on them, or just seeing them like underneath the surface of the water. So that is the one positive. I found some new brush piles on a lot of the ponds that I fish. All right, guys, you probably can't see it, but there's a bald, like bald eagle 30, 40 yards away from me right there in the top of that tree. And he probably knows I'm talking about him. Look, I come in peace. I'm gonna try to catch you a fish and I'm gonna throw it over on the bank if I catch one, see if he'll eat it. As long as it's not a 10 pounder, he can't have my 10 pounder, but I think it would be so sick if I, or imagine, ooh, I'm gonna try to put it on the front of my kayak and see if he'll come eat it. Historically, this has been a pretty decent, oh, there he goes, he's flying off, oh man. All right, we're gonna try a deep crank. We're gonna try one of these, maybe one of these. Those are both the same. Yeah, I'm gonna try that on this dam over here. I know it's gonna be a little bit deep on the dam side of the pond, so. Money Badger, 11 to 13 feet. That should be pretty good range. 11 minutes later. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Hey, that's a good one. That's a good one. I felt him when he ate it. Of course you did. That's how you know you had a fish hook. <laughs> Sorry, I felt like the... Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. That is a big one. That is a big one. And we don't have a scale. That is a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Ugly stick carbon rod. Look how the rod is. That's how so you know it's a good one. I'll let you run it a little bit. That's a good one. is a good fish. I'm not giving you to the bald eagle. You're going back in the water. Crazy thing. What if that bald eagle just came? Next time he jumped, the bald eagle just grabbed him out of there and just took him. I'd have to cut my line. I had to let him have him. And also we have a lizard on the back of the kayak. Look at that. Check that out. You see it? It's right there. <laughs> We're catching a fish. There's a bald eagle in the tree back behind us. And there's also a lizard. Stop. We have a lizard on the back of the kayak. There's a bald eagle in the tree behind us. We have like a four pounder on that we need to go ahead and land before he gets off. <laughs> hey, Mr. Bald Eagle, you can have the lizard on the back of the kayak. No free rods, bud. There's so much going on right now. And then this is actually a good fish. That's why I'm trying to let him tire out a little bit. Oh, here he comes. Oh, no, no, oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Let's go. That, I feel like that bald eagle's gonna come over here and take this thing for me. Look at that, that's a big one. <laughs> that is a big one. Oh, the dam, baby. I think this is one of my first fish ever catching off of the dam. Oh, look at that one. He's not as big as I thought he was. I saw his mouth come up and I was like, oh yeah, that's a big one. I mean, he still, he could go four. I think he could be like four right on the dot. If he was just filled out, this was early spring, he'd probably be a four or five. It'll be a five. I keep turning my head looking and making sure that bald eagle is going to try to take this bass. This would be a really good meal for him. And I said I was going to give him a fish. Maybe I'll hold him up, see if he'll come take him out of my hand. Actually, I don't want him to do that because he'd probably take my hand too. All right, we need a smaller one. We're going to get one of that eagle. We're going to throw one up. On <laughs> and I'm contemplating on if I should throw it up on the bank. It's like a three or four pounder. Should I throw it up on the bank so the bald eagle can have it? You want this, bud? Come get it. Come get it. All right, guys, we're going to let you go, bud. No bald eagle food today. Take off. Do your thing. Right, he's trying. Yeah, he's fine. All right. Boom. It's fish number two. That's a big one. That's a better one. Got our second one. I mean, we went maybe an hour, hour and a half without a bite until we got that second one. Ooh, I'm happy we caught a bigger fish on the rod, too, and we're able to fight it a little bit. So we were able to really get a good feel for this rod. I love it. I love it.
this is definitely going to be a new cranking rod for me all right guys we are off of the water and let me just say i love this rod i said it earlier in the video but i think this is going to be my new cranking rod anytime i pick up a crankbait i'm probably going to have this i'm going to have it tied onto this rod so before i end the video i want to tell you all some stuff that i really liked about it and a couple of things that i didn't like about it i would be 100 percent honest with you guys so everything i liked about it i love the seven foot medium it fits in the spectrum i think it's up to par with the other seven foot medium rods that i've used for the combo to be 150 dollars, i think that's a good value you're saving about 30 40 dollars the rod is 129 and the black max is going to run you about 40 to 50 dollars depending on where you get it from i think that it's priced well it's priced reasonably it's, it's a fair price for the rod who this is for i think it's for somebody who's trying to add a rod to your arsenal the rod comes in multiple different sizes so i like the seven foot medium for crankbait shirk bait stuff like that that but they also have a seven foot medium heavy which is going to be a good all-purpose rod so if you want to add another all-purpose rod you have that option so i think this rod really fits two type of people i think it fits a beginner bass fisherman that's very familiar with ugly stick stuff because i will say it kind of does remind me of like a gx2 just the feel of it or this rod is for if you're trying to add another rod into your arsenal because it comes in all different types of sizes so you can get one for jerk baits uh one just for general purpose like a seven foot medium heavy last but not least i really think that this rod would perform really well for a beginner just because it comes with this black max i think a black max is a great platform to use you get a good rod so you want to introduce somebody into bass fishing and you don't want to get them like a two three four hundred dollar combo i think that this is a great combo just for the fact of it's a pro series rod it's a i wouldn't put it in the low end of rods it's not like a low grade rod it's a great rod with a great reel but a reel that can be upgraded so i think that if you want to introduce somebody to fishing or if you're trying to get into fishing yourself i think that this is a great all-in-one combo and then whenever you're ready to upgrade you don't have to upgrade the rod you can just upgrade the reel uh, anything that comes in a two-piece it's automatically like low grade in my mind anything two-piece under 200 dollars is going to be like entry level in my mind so me personally what i would upgrade to is like a revo sx it would kind of match the scheme of the rod the red and black color scheme or even the abu garcia zeta i think that's a really good general purpose reel it's a seven one to one and you're going to be able to get and you're going to be able to get really good casting distance out of this thing thank you all for hanging out with me today let me know what you want to see next on the channel don't forget to fish them hard and have a great day love y'all thank y'all for the support chasing a bag i'm racing the clock look at them flock watching them flop used to see this on my sleep when i ain't had shit but my thoughts in the car i really was lost now i'm public with the soundscapes